Soviet troops on the streets of Vilnius meet with defiance from Lithuanian nationalists. Good evening. Red Army soldiers are on the streets of Lithuania tonight. Is it the beginning of another Soviet military crackdown? And should the West risk losing Moscow's support in the Gulf to further the cause of self-determination in the Baltic? And had it borne in upon them today, who really determines things in the Soviet Union? and seem to be discovering the limits of Mr. Gorbachev's commitment to reform. Tens of thousands of them formed a human shield around the parliament building to save it from seizure by Red Army troops, and so far they seem to have been successful. But two other buildings have been taken by the soldiers, and there are fears that others will follow. Lithuanians have appealed to the West for support against Moscow, but Washington, desperate to retain Soviet support in the Gulf, has said only that the army intervention is counterproductive. There were uncomfortable echoes of Tiananmen Square as Soviet armoured vehicles rolled onto the streets of Vilnius. The Lithuanian government, popularly elected and hell-bent upon independence, was told by some military bureaucrat that the troops were on manoeuvres. But by mid-morning, the paratroopers sent by the Kremlin supposedly to enforce the military call-up had stormed the Republic's press building and the defence ministry. Shots were fired over the heads of the crowd who'd been called there by Lithuanian radio to protect the country's independence. Paratroopers stormed the building uh, using automatic weapons. In result, some civilians were wounded. Inside the building, a brutal force was used against the employees of the publishing house and press center. The Republic's own meagre defense forces, untrained and armed only with the hope of independence, were pressed into action as the parliament itself came under threat. I believe that every man must now come to stand in defense of his motherland. And by afternoon, thousands of nationalists had answered the call, gathering to defend the parliament buildings and the television tower against the Red Army. They, in turn, were opposed by thousands of ethnic Russians who'd come to rally round the Soviet flag. The two sides kept apart by long lines of police. The Lithuanian president, Vitautis Landsbergis, telephoned Mr. Gorbachev to complain. Mr. Gorbachev's secretary told him the president was at lunch and couldn't be interrupted. They, we are shooting uh, from the uh, tanks, uh, going around this building. President Gorbachev is busy by lunch. Tonight, the sheer weight of numbers outside the parliament building, the symbol of Lithuanian independence, was holding off the army. But the army has surrounded the Vilnius telephone exchange, and there are signs that they aren't going to leave it at that. In the Soviet military base in Vilnius, uh, there are a lot of military vehicles uh, that are in a state of, of readiness with the engines running, uh, the engines running. The last information that, that uh, a unit of uh, paratroopers is moving from the second largest city, that is Kaunas, to, uh, in the direction of Vilnius. Thus far, the crowds of nationalistic Lithuanians seem confident and relaxed. This is not, therefore, like Prague in 68 or Tiananmen Square in 89. Or perhaps that should be not yet.